It's Lord Zippy Play, the Duke of the Goddamn Motherfucking Delaware. So I got a little, I got a little organic garden going on this year, and it's been perfect, perfect growing season. May has been beautiful up here in Seattle. Come on in, let me show you what I, let me show you what I got going on over here. Got a couple of three, three different kinds of tomatoes. This year we kind of planted them up against the house to add a little bit of extra heat. Just a little red pepper here, and I think that the heat that we're getting from the house radiating down is we've already started out to have some little uh, buds here on our red pepper plant. A couple more tomatoes, one more tomato, and then this is the first year that we've uh, grown shishito peppers. I can't fucking believe it. There's already three, three peppers grown on this plant. Oh, and come on, follow, follow me over here. You know, even if you if you're excited now, just it just gets more and more exciting. You know, you've got your time. This stuff just grows. This stuff just grows year round. Last year we did have some mint growing here. That stuff just it just takes over everything. Of course, you have to have a little bit of basil, a little bit of a flat leaf parsley, and over here I have three different types of um, cucumbers that we're going to use as a slicing cucumber and a salad, maybe a sandwich, and then we're going to probably infuse a little bit of gin on uh, with those later on in the season. We have the wide variety of a leaf leaf lettuce here. We just get out here with our scissors, just cut enough for a salad. You know, like when it's warm like this in the afternoon, you kind of want to do it do it in the morning when they're not as wilty. We have two types of beans over here. We have your bush bean, and then we have your pole bean that's going to slowly grow up the uh, little, little trellis there. But we're most excited about the first thing that we have that we're ready to harvest is our radishes. Come on over here. I got up in here. I, I take some. So we have a we have the uh, French French breakfast radish. And over here, I can't remember if these are the black radishes or if these are the watermelon. Nope, these are the watermelon. But the fresh breakfast, they are like ready to go. Look at this. Look at that. We're going to uh, cook these with uh, with our with our chicken tonight. Let me get a few more. Of these. Radishes. We have to put this little bit of black fencing up, up this year because uh, rabbits uh, rabbits have taken taken over. We used to have coyotes in the neighborhood. Coyotes are gone. Rad, uh, rabbits flourish. We've got a couple of kinds of beets here. You know, there you go. I'm always I'm taking care of business. I'm trying to put a little bit of effort. I'm trying to put a little bit of effort into life. You know, so move on to my golden years. Um, there you go. Thanks. If these are dirty, otherwise I put one in my mouth to taste it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna taste it later. I'm gonna go into the kitchen now, and I'm gonna start getting ready, ready to make this uh, chicken on the old smoker. I'll get back to you later. Well, come on in now. I'm up in the kitchen now. Here's these delicious French breakfast radishes, and I think it's, it's a deal. You can kind of dip these in a little, little, little butter, have a little board, and sprinkle a little salt on them. I think they're delicious. Um, we'll try that out uh, a little, a little bit later. I did eat one. They're not, not too. They're a little bit milder. Um, so I'm going to put these radishes, and I have three, look at this carrot, I've got these three measly carrots, this one raggedy bit of uh, cabbage that's been in the refrigerator for quite, quite, a, quite a few weeks, and um, a couple of, couple of uh, ratty potatoes as well that have been in the uh, potato, potato onion drawer. I'm just going to cut this, cut this uh, in half here. And these items, I'm going to add a little bit of stock in here. But I'm going to put these under the uh, under the chicken when it's cooking in the smoker. And I'm not going to peel these potatoes all the way. Keep a little bit of that skin on. And yes, I am going to be making a cocktail this evening, so I know that you're all you're all wondering. It's like, why are you boring us with this with your with your farm with your farm to table trickery there, Blaine? Well, you know, I like to keep things we like to keep things interesting here. Um, our little. Uh, our little slice of the world as we move into June. This is, I probably shouldn't say it, but this is Rael's birthday cake. You know, because that's how we do it over here at the, uh, at our complex. I don't know, we don't really have a name for our complex, do we? No. No, look at that. What happened to that carrot? I know we should have got carrots at the store today, but we did not. But you know, you, you you get the picture. So I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna put a little stock in there. I'm gonna put these under the chicken. I've got the I've got the wood chips are soaking. I'm gonna about ready to fire off the smoker. I'm gonna get the cocktail stuff ready. I'm gonna pull that chicken out of the refrigerator. I'm gonna get that ready. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do a whole bird. I, I don't think I'm going. Uh, maybe I will go spatchcock. 
We'll see. Or else nod your head yes. And then the one thing when you cook it in the smoker, you don't get that crispy skin. It gets kind of a little, little on, the, on the chewy side. That's all right. Just hang tight. I'm going to be back with that cocktail. All right, here we are. We're back. Uh, Rails picked out a cocktail. This is the DNA cocktail number one. It was a number two, correct? It was a classic one. Correct, Rail picked it out, so I didn't read the yet. Uh, so just to let you know, um, since we only had a few carrots, we did have a little uh, half of a sweet potato um, in the refrigerator. I cut that up, and I've got a few um, few little uh, cloves of garlic here that I'm going to kind of just slice up and throw over the top. And then I ran outside to the garden there, and... Uh, I picked some uh, sprigs of thyme and some oregano I'm going to uh, do part time here as well. And I'm just going to leave them on the stem so that when this is all cooked up, let's kind of pull them out. Anyway, there we go. Beautiful. The DNA cocktail. We have some gin. We're going with the uh, Mon Monkey 47. We actually we're, we're, we have two, um, two of the ingredients that we're using this evening were donated by the uh, um, Dagon's Deep Den, a.k.a. the Bone Back Comedy of Horror. Podcast, film festival, you know, all around multi multimedia um, people over there, over there on the other side of the lake. Um, so we've got our Monkey Forty Seven Gin and the Angostura bitters. I've got the livestock because I couldn't find a bottle, and they felt I was down. I was really down on my luck that week, and you know they brightened it up with this uh, old Angostura bitters. So we have our gin, we have our apricot liqueur, a little bit of lemon juice. A little bit of simple syrup. We're kind of on the dregs of the lemon lemon juice and the simple syrup. This is an easy one. I'm just going to go ahead and make this happen. I'm going to get get that get that chicken all ready to go. So we're going to go three. I'm using the uh, one ounce uh, side here, right? Yes. We're going three ounces of our Monkey Forty Seven. We actually just passed um, Esquin Wine Merchants on Fourth Avenue and Lander this afternoon, and they have the uh, the recipe for the um, Monkey 47 uh, Vesper that they have uh, displayed in their window. There's our three ounces of gin. We're going to go one and a half, one and a quarter ounces of our apricot brandy. Apricot liqueur, I guess, more, more like it. There's one, there's one and a quarter, two lemon. Uh, let, it's, Probably going to be a little heavy on the lemon for me, but I'm following the recipe because this is Braille's birthday week. Oh, look at that. Oh, that's the thing. When you buy these bottles, any of these bottles, once you start using standard measures, you're very, very rarely are you going to end up with anything extra left over. It's just not going to happen. Unless you start to get sloppy and you're doing free pour. Um, lemon. Um, one half ounce of our simple syrup. And a few dashes of our Angostura bitters. There we go. And well, they were frosted coupe glasses. It's kind of the tension, the sexual tension is kind of hot. DNA cocktail number one. Let's see. I was going to start to relate my my cultural celebrating of diversity last night, which is really something. Okay, Rail. Sot sachet on over here. Oh yeah. Oh ooh. Give me the money shot. Uh oh, I was only six inches taller. All right. Oh, not bad. I actually did. I did put a, a tit more of the uh, simple syrup, but no, it actually did not end up being too lemony. All right, I'm gonna be back. I'm gonna get that. I'm gonna get that chicken ready. Do you want to watch me spatchcock that chicken? Should I spatch? I'm spatch. You want to watch me do that? Okay, it's kind of gruesome. If you're not into like watching dead animals get uh, their backbones removed, you might want to like turn away. I'm going to be right back when we get this all ready. All right, here we go. We've got our chicken here. Rust tied up. And I know not everybody's into it, but we've got some hearts and um, a little bit of uh, liver here. Um, I'm into it. So, Rail's not, but I am. Um, so, I'm going to flip it over. 
and I am going to do, I'm not a master at this or, at this or anything, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut, cut the backbone out. Um, if you don't have any kitchen shears like this, well, um, I don't know what to tell you. I'm sure that there's a, a, a technique to get it out of there with a knife. So like I said, this is, this is fairly, uh, this is fairly involved. You have to be into what you're doing. Flipping it around. Spatchcocking it, it, uh, it makes it cook more evenly. It's really great. We did the, we did the turkey um, last year that we spatchcocked. Turned out great. We will do that again. Cooks in half the time. And there's just that little bit of cartilage in there. So there we go. I'm gonna fold these wings behind. And I'm gonna uh, pat this thing dry and I'm just gonna get it seasoned up with a, just a little bit of a, a little bit of salt and pepper. That, that's it right there. Um, and that's it. And then I'm gonna put this on the barbecue. I got the, uh, got the smokers going. This is probably gonna take, it's gonna take a couple hours but I've got the smoker at a, at a uh, lower temperature. If this was in the, in the oven, I, I'd like to do it in the oven at a higher temperature, around 400, 400, 425. That's gonna take about 70, 80, 85 minutes, depending on the size of the bird. All right, but just hang tight. We're gonna be back. Thanks for joining us here. It's uh, it's Sunday here at the Wicker Bar. We just kind of we got a chance to take a little tour of the garden. We made a cocktail. We're, we're making it happen today, making it happen. All right, here we go. Yard bird, she's ready. Just kind of follow me out here to the to the smoker. This is kind of a, kind of turned out to be one of these very uh, spontaneous days for Rayo and myself. Um, got the smoker ready. Um, it's about up to temp. I did just I just put the chips in, but that's okay because it takes a while. Once I open it up, it's gonna have to warm up again. can't see it, but it's in there. The requisite pan of water. There is our vegetables that are going to go underneath our chicken. And there's a possibility that the vegetables are not going to cook all the way, um, and that's fine. I'll, I'll have the uh, oven preheated, and we will uh, we'll just go ahead and finish them off in the oven while the uh, while the uh, chicken is resting. There we go, yard bird. Just salt and pepper, that's all I did. I didn't, you know, rail, we were gonna brine it, but um, I didn't, didn't bother. Boom. There we go. Chicken on the smoker. All right, and you know, hour and a half, cu couple hours, magic. So just, just hang tight. I mean, if you can hang tight with me, if the camera doesn't turn off or anything like that, we're going to be back in. We're going to finish this dinner up, all right?